Holistic Health Crusaders, Dr. Ren here, and today we're going to think about makeup. The following information is from an article I created for the 2015 fall edition of You Magazine. You Magazine is Utah's first online women's magazine brought forth to empower us by Naneve Dinya. Naneve is an Assyrian American TV personality introduced to me by Union sweetheart Jamie Johan Tompkins. You can subscribe to the online magazine for free at NinevyDenya.com. I grew up a tomboy and was never taught to do my makeup or other girly things like shaving my legs. My childhood days were spent getting dirty, playing in nature instead of in front of the mirror. The other girls in the neighborhood spent their time inside playing dress up, painting their faces in front of the mirror, or lying out on the sun, but that just wasn't my gig. My tan was, and still is, a byproduct of my outside adventures achieved without chemical lotion, and my face to this day is allowed to breathe and does not touch makeup regularly. In junior high school, I started being teased and called a hippie. One day I came home from seventh grade and asked my mother if she would teach me how to use so-called hygienic products on my body that they gave out in gym class. All the other girls were already using products like these and occupied themselves during school lunch in debates of who was using the better products based on superficial justifications. However, my mother told me that I was too young to get involved with any of it. I did rebel and ended up cutting my legs pretty bad shaving, but ultimately, mom saying no to my request for an armory of commercial hygienic products turned out to be a blessing in disguise. For one, can you believe companies were giving us samples in gym at such a young age to get us hooked for life? Samples of deodorants, which contained aluminum. The aluminum is absorbed immediately into our lymphatic system. In addition, we were given sanitary pads and tampons that were not made from all organic cotton or materials. Did you know the stuff feminine hygienic products are made from can get absorbed and stored in our lady parts? At this impressionable age, being given such a way cool free product and enough dollar off coupons to last us into adulthood really wasn't that cool. How would we have thought to research them or realize we couldn't pronounce half the ingredients on the labels? So thank you for all the free samples, coupons that made our mothers momentarily happy with the thought of doubling up, and armpits that smell of synthetic petunias. Truthfully, I would have really appreciated it much more without the omission of information on how it may affect our fertility as we grew up and wanted to become mommies ourselves. Fast forwarding a bit, I was always fascinated by colors, fragrances, and the resilience of the human body to process everything we put it through. Studying naturopathy, I learned how colors and fragrances go more than skin deep when we see or smell or apply them during a beauty ritual. They are recurrently found in nature, initially used for attraction, and symbolize youth and fertility. The way the alluring scent of vibrant flowers or sight of eye-catching peacock feathers and butterfly wings just draw you in are primary examples. Indigenous peoples derived many of their courting ceremonies and fashion from observing just that. Translation in New Jersey, how you doing? Considering I turned out to be more of a hybrid Jersey girl, I do enjoy and embrace my time now in front of the mirror. I like highlighting my natural features and feel not only empowered, but smart about looking good. The smart part came from discovering the knowledge to choose products that achieve my desired outcome are better for my health and the environment. Don't get me wrong, I did wax and wane through all kinds of beauty products and I'm certainly not granola. I actually became interested in what goes into beauty products from a former beloved of mine who owned a makeup for men company. That's not him, but I never smooch and tell. Although he had access to an online portal listing every makeup ingredient ever known or created by a man. I understand sometimes you've just got to use that product to get that look, and different professions have different aesthetic demands, so that's why I'm pro-integrative with my approach to everything. In this case, emphasizing the awareness and balance that holistic health is based on when it comes to war paint. You've heard of food for thought, and I think makeup for thought is the same thing. In all seriousness, a trace amount of Anything we apply to our skin can be found in every cell in our body after about five minutes time. 
Did you know that the feet have over 4,000 pores on them and are the largest pores found on the body? When we put products on our skin, hair or nails that contain synthetics, they tend to build up in our system, affecting all of our bodily responses. Sometimes this is why you just can't lose that last 10 pounds. If you ever decide to spend as much as it would cost for a brand new car on a detox vacation, you'll find the first thing they tell you is no makeup for the week. So the first thing in general to consider is not putting anything on our skin, which happens to be the largest organ, that has any ingredient we can't pronounce or would not eat. Hence the term food grade makeup. Secondly, take a look at how the human body is a microcosm. I don't want to get too quantum here, so let's just go with the lips for this one. According to Chinese medicine, the lips are a microcosm of the small and large intestine, and obviously a gateway into the body. We have additional confirmation that anything we put on them gets absorbed right into our gut. That's why some of my homemade lip gloss is made out of food grade ingredients like cocoa butter and pumpkin seed oil. Sounds good enough to eat, right? Especially given the statistic that the average woman consumes two and a half pounds of lipstick in a lifetime, containing known carcinogens. It's my point exactly. So don't let the fact that your bronzer doesn't say organic on the label necessarily deter you at this point in time. The USDA only grants the term organic to cosmetic ingredients when they are food grade and meet the same strict farming and processing regulations as the produce you buy in the natural market. Companies and farms have to jump through many hoops, including large costs and lengthy time frames to get these certifications, so their resources might have other priorities. Let's face it, most of the companies that put out products with the highest quality control are small or startup grassroots. Plus, there hasn't been a large public demand for these symbols on makeup labels. The mainstream companies I've found that are more natural leaning are not completely 100% food grade yet. That's why it's so important to be informed and know where your everything comes from nowadays. Have you noticed more organic options becoming available in our supermarkets? I know I have, and that's because we are voting with our dollars. I'd like to see more food grade makeup options voted and readily available. Some relevant questions I've gotten during my holistic health crusade are, Dr. Ren, what about long lasting and waterproof makeup options so we don't have to keep reapplying? Well, to me, those buzzwords are a red flag. When you opt to wear makeup products advertised that way, it really means that they contain chemicals, emulsifiers, binder synthetics, fillers and parabens, which are waxes, and are ultimately clogging more than just your pores. Remember, those last 10 pounds, we want them off, right? I've begun reading my makeup labels and want to know what silica and mica are and if they are safe. Silica, commonly found in nature as sand, is one of the two most common minerals on Earth. When used in cosmetics, it's not harmful. The role of silica in makeup is to help it last longer by absorbing oil and aiding the smoothness of appearance. Mica is a shimmery silicate mineral that has been used for centuries as a coloring and pigment in makeup. It's considered generally safe by the CTFA, now known as the Personal Care Products Council. How about dimethicone? Although CIR, the Cosmic Ingredient Review Panel, and FDA has assessed it as safe in personal care products, I stay away from this one as it's a laboratory-made polymer or oil. Big companies find this ingredient convenient because it's inexpensive and gives their products that glide feeling, making them more easily spreadable. That is why you may see it frequently on shampoo, conditioner, and lotion labels. It is also a filler and why many foundation and makeup primer labels indicate it for wrinkles and fine lines. What are some of my recommended products to use, you ask? Well, currently, the top three products in my cosmic caboodle are Sea Buckthorn Oil for my face, which is a pure natural oil for cleansing, exfoliating, and moisturizing. This oil is derived from a super berry produced by the Sea Buckthorn plant. It is pro-radiant, 
yet anti-radiant and capable of growing in outer space. You can even find it at best skin ever at longevitywarehouse.com. My second favesy is ozonated lip gloss. Ozone, or O3, has antifungal, antibacterial, and antiviral properties. So you're getting that glossy, moisturized lip with some added health benefits. I order the ruby juice um, from livinglibations.com. So that's where my smooches come from. My third is raw cacao butter as a body moisturizer. This is literally buy and apply. Have fun experimenting too. Most natural health food markets, including our local Whole Foods, carry it, or I order mine from Raw Revelations at rrsuperfoods.com. We are in a new age of beauty. Our uniqueness is what's beautiful, and being happy makes us better looking. Go figs. We are learning that nutrition plays a key role in the luster of our hair, the clarity of our eyes, the glow of our skin, and the overall vibrancy of our being. This rings true whether it's applied as food grade makeup or forked in as a delicious salad. Yumsy. <laughs> Who is ready to radiate from the inside out and put some beetroot based blush on as a natural, not made up, cheek and or lip stain? Try this recipe on for shine. I call it, let us turn up the beets. You will need containers for lip gloss or recycle old lip gloss jars, a double boiler method, stainless chopping board, knife, spoon, bowl, and strainer, and your ingredients would be four tablespoons of GMO-free vegetable glycerin, a quarter large beet, you can save the rest for din din or double up on the recipe, and it yields approximately two six milliliter jars. The directions are to slice the beet into small quarters, bring your water to a boil, add the glycerin, add the sliced beets, and watch the red pigment release into the glycerin as the beets soften. You can stir and press gently as needed, lower the heat to simmer, and cook it for 25 minutes. Then strain the liquid into the bowl and scoop it into your lip gloss containers. Now for the application, you'd like to use a lip brush or Q-tip to apply it to your lips and layer it as desired for darker wear. Allow up to one minute to dry in between each application. For the cheeks, a sponge or cotton pad works best. If you do use your fingertips, it will stain. And you can also add pure therapeutic grade essential oil, such as lavender, peppermint, rose, or vanilla. And you can see mydoterra.com forward slash Loren Lorino to purchase essential oils. Refrigeration isn't necessary, but suggested. And you can even use the stain as a base application to additional natural makeup. If you like the sound of this recipe, please visit lorenlorino.com forward slash lip stain to print it out. Smooches and think again next time.